Christmas. My name is Laura, and I'm here to get you ready for the awesome, non-stop, Yuletide ride more commonly known as an SVP Kids Family Christmas. We'll start in just a few minutes, but first, I wanna know who's all here today. So, if you're on something that has a comment box, I want you to go to it and tell me who all in your family is watching today. And if you're on something that has a share button, I want you to smash it so that other people in your world can join in on the fun too. If this is your first time with SBP Kids, we are super glad to have you here. And hopefully this won't be the last time you're with us because we're about to play a little game. Here's how you play. A lot of Christmas items are gonna appear on the screen and your job is to find the one special item that you'll see at the beginning before the time runs out. Do you think you can do it? I know you can. much fun. How'd you do? Did you find the candle and then did you find the wreath? You know what those two items together makes me think of? An advent wreath. Have you ever heard of an advent wreath before? Hmm. Question. Who out there has ever heard of that? You can put it in the comments. For those of you who don't know, here's a quick history lesson. <clears throat> Gotta find the right page. The Advent wreath originated in the 16th century. That's the 1500s, by the way. The tradition symbolizes the passage of the four weeks leading up to Christmas. The wreath holds one candle to represent each week before Christmas. The fifth candle emblematizes the birth of Jesus. The lighting of each candle is accompanied by selected scripture readings. This custom actually started in big family settings, but now often happens as part of big church worship. And how do I know all this? Because I'm one smart cookie. So today we're actually going to take all the Advent fun and bring it back to the family setting. And now that we're all prepped and primed and know what an Advent wreath is, let's get on to the good stuff. Are you ready to start an SBP Kids Family Christmas? Mm, I don't think you were loud enough. I said, are you ready to get an SBP Kids Family Christmas started? There you go. All right, I think we're all ready. So here we go. Joy to the world, the Lord.
SVP Kids Family Christmas. If you've never watched SVP Kids before, then you are in for a treat because we have so many fun things planned. My name is Laura and my co-host Matt seems to be running a little bit behind, which is so very exactly like him. But no matter, because it's Christmas. In fact, this year, we're gonna be talking about an adventurous Christmas. <laughs> How many of you have an advent wreath at home? If you have some candles at home, or if you have your own wreath, then you and your family can actually pull it out right now if you want to. If you don't have the candles or you don't wanna pull it out right now, that's okay, you can watch too. But if you have the candles, you should light the candles along with us at home. For some of you, this could be a start of a brand new tradition. And some of you may have already been lighting candles all throughout Advent already. You'll see what I mean as we go. It takes some patience, which is tough for me at Christmas. I don't like waiting. Do you? But these candles are all about waiting and using this time to prepare our hearts and our minds for Christmas. Because this Christmas, I want you to know that... Wait, wait a minute. I can't take a call now. Let me just try to cancel that here. Oh no, I think I, I answered the call. Oh boy, it's Reginald. And in the spirit of Christmas, I don't think I can hang up on him. Good day, fair viewers. My name is Reginald Fastidious III. I am the greatest one-man Shakespearean Bible story reenactor, and I am here so that you may enjoy my presence and know that this Christmas. Yeah, exactly, Reginald. That's what I was telling everyone. This Christmas, we can boldly say that there is absolutely- I hope! Yes. Thank you! Wait, what? <sighs> Reginald, you. we are doing a Christmas- And thank you, my dear viewers, thusly. <laughs> Reginald, it's been a tough year, but all hope is not lost. Yes, it is. No. Yes. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Oh, I just punched myself in the nose. Reginald, unlike you, I actually believe that there is a lot of hope to be had, especially around Christmas. That's not what the Bible says. What are you talking about? Surprise, I've read the Bible. 
I see. Well, after performing it for 10 years, I finally decided to actually read it. And I was appalled. Oh, there my lip. Oh, behold, I am the bearer of bad tidings during this happy season. Prepare for the worst. Okay, I'm prepared. To the performance art piece. Um, so, okay, I know we said we were gonna celebrate Christmas, but I find that when Reginald dials in, it's just best to let him do his thing, so we gotta watch him. In the beginning, God created the universe and all that is in it, including our home, Earth. It is good, but don't get used to it. <laughs> God did not say that last part. Then God created the first human, Adam. But God took one of Adam's ribs ow, to make the first woman, Eve. Ow! I got Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, rib. I've got Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, rib. <laughs> However, Adam and Eve broke the only rule God gave them. And people were separated from God. Huh. Things kept getting worse. God called an old man named Abraham. Yes, Lord. I will have as many children as there are stars in the sky and the heavens. Well, how do you expect me to pay for college? No! Then all of Abraham's descendants were enslaved by the Egyptians. Walk like an Egyptian. Okay, some of this is in the Bible. Emphasis on some. So God spoke to a man named Moses who apparently wore Abraham's hand-me-downs, but he had a stick through a burning bush and told Moses he would convince Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. God sent terrible plagues like frogs. 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 Eventually, Pharaoh let God's people go. And Moses led them to safety by walking through the Red Sea. But the Israelites disobeyed God and couldn't enter the land God promised them for 40 years. No hope! And then they were ruled by bad kings. <laughs> were conquered by the Babylonians. Ah! Oof, oof. Everyone, run away! Run for your lives! Ah, no hope for you! Ha, ha, ha! I think this gotta stop. Reginald, Reginald, Reginald! Ha, 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 penguin, ha, ha! Wait, Reginald, and scene. What? Thank you! Ah, thank you! Reginald, first of all, there are tons of stories that you skipped over in the Old Testament that are filled with hope and joy and peace and love. Ha! No, listen, the Bible is an amazing story of God's love for us. Really? Yes, it starts off as a mess, but God had a plan to fix it right from the start. Even when things look difficult, God is still working for good. And that's where Christmas comes in. Huh. I thought it began in July when all the stores started selling Christmas decorations. Actually, it began a long time before that. It actually starts 
with a candle. Wait, are we expecting a power outage? No, no, no. This, if anything, this candle represents a message of ultimate hope. And that's where we start the Advent wreath. It's a centuries-old tradition where people light one candle each of the four Sundays before in December to help them get ready for Christmas and remember what it's all oh, about. What's happening? Oh, my connection! Mom must be streaming another Hallmark movie. Mom! Mom, I'm trying to stream! Oh, no! I think... I think... I think... Well... I hope he's still watching. And all of you families out there, take a look at this as we get ready to light our first candle. All right. How's it looking? Pretty good? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, you wanna get that? Yeah. Yeah, get that piece right there. Mm -hmm. It's tied up, just like your shoes. <laughs> okay, enough MacGyvering. It's fine. Oh, you know, we just gotta get it just right. It's right. Okay, Let's get it just right, get it just right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah. In the beginning, God created everything. He created people in his image to be his friends. And it was good. But then the people God loved so much turned away from him. Sin entered the world and everyone and everything was broken. For thousands of years, people just kind of did their own thing. Things were looking pretty dark. But from the beginning, God had a plan to rescue his people, to rescue us. And he shared that plan with the prophet Isaiah. Go ahead now. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And that is what hope looks like. Hope looks a little wonky. No, it's, ooh, uh, get it out. Dad! Can I call 911? <laughs> I think that's all the hope I can handle today. <laughs> 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 Isaiah knew that things weren't going well for most people, that people needed to see that God had a much bigger plan, that God had promised to send the best repair person ever to fix a broken world, the king of kings, the prince of peace, the greatest doctor. God's rescuer was going to be all of these things for all people. This candle represents that hope. Whew. Hey, sorry, sorry I'm late, Laura. Matt, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you here. Well, thanks. Um, but why were you late? Well, I was out playing reindeer games, but I'm, I'm ready now. Uh, reindeer games? Yeah, like uh, past the antlers, uh, the reindeer relay race, pin the nose on the Rudolph. Doesn't everyone play reindeer games at Christmas? I mean. Those aren't part of my traditions, but who am I to rain on someone's reindeer parade? But Matt, we're talking about something else today. This isn't just all about Christmas. This is an adventurous Christmas. Well, I thought my reindeer games were adventurous, but uh, actually, I think I can drive home the importance of Christmas. I can help. Okay, awesome. Well, we just lit the candle for hope. So what do you got for us? Okay, well, I love how the light from the candle represents hope. And I was so excited to win past the antlers, which is why I got these super awesome Christmas oh, lights. Congrats. And I can take Christmas light wherever I go. But then I came in second to Dasher <sighs> in, rain, in the reindeer relay race. And second place is really the first loser. Yeah, right? yeah. But that's okay, because not everybody can win at every single thing. Sooner or later, we all lose, which kind of makes me a winner in a loser sort of way. So yay me. Okay, well, that's the spirit, I guess. But you also mentioned pin the nose on Rudolph. So what happened during that game? Yeah, well, uh, that, uh, that did not go well at all. I mistook Rudolph's butt for his face. I put the nose on the wrong end, and uh, it was an absolute disaster. I came in last place for that one. Oh, Matt. I'm so sorry you lost. I bet you were 
bummed. Ha, I see what you did there. But uh, actually, I really wasn't. Like, look at it this way. If a loser loses, then something happened that was expected, right? Because mm -hmm. someone was going to win and someone was going to lose. That's what happens in a game. Yeah. But when something happens that we don't expect, something kind of really weird or crazy, uh, then what do we do? Right? Because I think when people stand up and say, I didn't get what I wanted, but then they keep going, they kind of win and lose all at the same time. And that's why this loser, with my head held high, is kind of a winner in a loser sort of way. All right, all right. Well, you know what? That was the weirdest transition ever, but you actually have a really good point. Sooner or later, we all face a moment where we don't get what we want. It may be losing a game like you did or not getting that gift you really, really wanted for Christmas. We all face that. And you know what? I want to introduce you. I want us to take a look at a family whose Christmas journey is looking really different this year. Um, but let's see what they do. of years since Isaiah. At least, that's what we know about it. Right. And then, out of nowhere, God sends the angel Gabriel to an ordinary girl named Mary, and he says, Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High God. He will rule forever over his people, and that kingdom will never end. You would have flipped out. Well, yeah. Who wouldn't? <laughs> All right, girls. Can we finish? Okay. So then Mary asks, How can this happen? I'm not even married yet. And Gabriel says, The Holy Spirit will make this happen. Your relative Elizabeth will have a child, even though she is old. That's because what God says will always come true. And Mary says, I serve the Lord may happen to me just as you said it would. She just goes with it? No way. Yeah, I bet she asked way more questions than Luke records here. But somehow, she chooses not to let this crazy, unexpected thing send her into a tailspin. That's what real joy looks like. Wait, I want to do it. On the count of three? One, two, three. You are gonna blow those out as soon as we hang up, right? It probably helps with the dirty laundry smell. I'm not gonna burn down the dorm, I promise. Okay. <laughs> I've lived through some fantastic Christmases, and I've also experienced some Christmases that weren't what anyone was expecting. No matter what this season looks like for you and your family, you can find joy, real joy. I know that might not make any sense, but it's true. Even when things seem like they aren't ever going to turn out quite right, you can trust that God is working it all out and that he loves you so much and he won't leave you in the middle of a mess for very long. Ooh, fire. I like fire. Which is why I'm going to move this out of the way while you do whatever it is you're going to do. Well, sometimes you have to find and put the pieces back together in order to find joy and I'm going to do just that. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm making cookies, obviously, because cookies bring me joy. You know what doesn't bring me joy all by itself? Flour or baking soda. 
But when I mix it all together with, with chocolate chips and sprinkles and other fun stuff, I get so joyful. Shouldn't you have measured any of that? Oh, never mind. Do you think I can bring the fire back? Can I light the next candle? Okay, if you really want joy-filled cookies, I think you better take that and put that in the oven. Oh, good, good thought. I'm, I'm on it, okay. So we've lit two candles on our journey towards Christmas. And as we've lit them, we've thought about hope and joy. Now we might be representing these candles in a different order than you're used to, but that just makes it more fun because you have to guess what the next one is. It's gonna be a little tricky, but don't worry. Let's go see what it is now. Ropes, yeah. Ropes and hot chocolate. That's what oh, it good, you did find it. I did, I did. <laughs> it's a little different this year, but you know what? It's gonna be great. It's okay, it'll still be special. <laughs> there we go. All right, story time. Okay. Luke 2. We're gonna read about how God gave us baby Jesus. <laughs> In those days, Caesar Augustus made a law. It required that a list be made of everyone in the whole Roman world. Everyone went to their own town to be listed. And the king's rule meant that everybody had to take a trip back to the place that they came from. So right before Mary was supposed to have her baby, Joseph and Mary had to go on a long, long, long trip to Bethlehem. <laughs> yep, that's right. But they didn't have a car like we do. Did they have a plane? <laughs> <laughs> they actually had to ride on a donkey. Oh. You know. The ee-haw, ee-haw. Ee-haw, ee-haw. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and when they got to Bethlehem, everybody else had come back too. So that means there were no hotels or guest rooms for them. So that means Mary and Joseph had to stay in a place with all the animals. Would you want to sleep next to a sheep? Mm-mm. It'd be bad. <laughs> bad. 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now. While Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, the time came for the child to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn. It was a boy. She wrapped him in large cloths. Then she placed him in a manger. Yeah, God loves us so much that he gave us baby Jesus. That's right. And to celebrate that, we're gonna light this special candle to remember how much God loves us. Do you think you can help me? Yeah, you can do it. There yeah, you go. Good job. <laughs> good job. Come here. Your mom's gonna get your sister. <laughs> you see your sister? <laughs> be gentle, be gentle. There you go. <laughs> good job. <laughs> Babies change things. But the baby we celebrate at Christmas changed everything for everyone, everywhere. The love shown by the Son of God leaving heaven and becoming one of us is more than any of us could ever imagine. This Christmas, I pray that the love of God is a huge part of everything you do, everything you give, and everything you feel. Did somebody say baby? Well, that is kind of the point of Christmas. Wait, why are you so freaked out? Well, my wife could literally have a baby at any moment, and I thought that's what you were trying to tell me. Well, as far as I know, your baby isn't quite on its way yet. But while we're on the subject, what do you think about babies, Matt? <laughs> well, nothing says L-O-V-E like a B-A-B-Y. And here's what I know from being the world's greatest dad. You know, we... We do all these funny and weird things. We bring all this junk around just so we can keep a seven pound noisemaker from making all sorts of crazy noises. Yeah, well, I guess that's one way to put it. Babies do take a ton of work and care and attention and special food. I remember those days well. It was so busy with a baby. Well, because you're so close to having a baby, and because I know you want to light the next candle. Actually, I think I need a nap. But Matt, we're in the middle of an SBP Kids family Christmas. 
Yeah, but talking about what it's like to have a new baby reminded me that I'm going to have a new baby, and I think I needed my sleep when I still can. <sighs> okay, well, I hope Matt can relax which is something that's hard to do this year between all the traffic and Zoom parties and the noise and the constant busyness, which can all feel really un-Christmassy. But still, there's something going on under all of it that leads us to our next candle. So good. Thank you. It is very good. Thank you. <laughs> and the cookies. cookies. Oh, good really too. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would like those. <laughs> okay, I've assigned parts. Huh? Seriously, Dad? <laughs> Not everything needs to be a grand plan. Oh. Oh, looks like I'm up. <sighs> there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It was night, and they were taking care of their sheep. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. <laughs> oh. Whoa, Dad. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said to them, That's you. Oh, uh, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here's how you'll know I'm telling you the truth. You'll find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. You can do that with your phone now? It's a new app. Keep going. And the angels were praising God and they said, May glory be given to God in the highest heavens, and may peace be given to those He is pleased with on earth. May glory be given to God in the highest heavens, and may peace be given to those He is pleased with on earth. <laughs> Angels left and went into heaven. Then the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. After the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. The shepherds returned. They gave glory and praise to God. Peace on earth. With God. With people. Can we do this again? <laughs> Peace. Even just saying that word can lower the tension, can't it? But this candle represents a peace that's far bigger than just a relaxing breath or a nap. This is a peace between us and God. This candle actually represents how much God loves you. God made a way for you to live with Him forever. He isn't disappointed in you. He isn't angry with you. Because His Son Jesus came to earth on a mission, God is at peace with you and me. Christmas is so many different things to so many different people. And that's great because this candle in the center of it all is called the Christ candle. Feel good? Yeah. Yeah? All right, let's do this. Just let mom do it. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Thought you wanted to call the fire department. <laughs> it's all right, mom knows what she's doing. Oh yeah, mom got this. <laughs> so dad, yeah. how long ago was the first Christmas? <laughs> well, Jesus was actually born about 2,000 years ago. 2,000? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, Christmas wasn't just something that happened a long time ago. I mean, God sent his son, Jesus, to rescue all of us for all time. 
And because of Jesus, everything will be made right again. We know that we can have hope, joy, peace, and love. <laughs> and when we follow Jesus, God can work through us to bring hope and joy and peace <laughs> and love into the world around us. So mom, what's that candle? Well, that is the Christ candle. We light it on Christmas Eve as a reminder that God kept his promise. That there has never been a greater gift in this world than Jesus. Mm. Can I light it? Yeah. Let me give you a hand. Yeah. Got it? Oh. Careful. Nice. Wow. This was fun. This was fun. Look. <laughs> And this is a very lovely advent is. we have here. Good job, Mom. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs> Christmas is only possible because our journey always takes us to this candle in the middle. The one that represents what Christmas is all about. God's Son. This candle shines so bright in our lives that it helps put everything else in the right light. That is the greatest gift ever. It was the first gift of Christmas. It will be the greatest gift for every one of us forever. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Did I miss the last candle? Oh, look at you. You seem all bright and chipper now. Power nap. Amazing. You should try it sometime. I am so much energy. It's time to party. You know what? I think it is too. Let's sing some Christmas carols together. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>